All right, let's look at what we have here. These are your internal styles that you've created so far. And notice I put a space between styles just because I think it's easier to read. And I always put one curly bracket at the top and the other one down here at the bottom so that I can randomly add styles as many as I want. Oops. And I also do the thing that's going to affect most of the page first, and then the big things, the top things, and then the things down below that. And there is no rule that says you have to do that. I just do it to keep things in order. So the purpose of this short video is to talk to you about uh, background image properties. So what we'll do is first we'll look at what we have for images. They're in the Assets folder and they're in an Images folder as well. We have this BG black comb. So BG should give you a hint right there that it's a background image. And you know it is a background image because look at the finished result right there. You can see that's the background image. Um, we also have a BG H3. That should tell you that this is going to be the background of the H3. Let's again look at where that is. You can see all the H3s have that little red thing underneath them. And then we have the BG Leaf. You can see that. Let's look at where that goes. That goes underneath every paragraph. See how that's looking? And then we have the li hover and the li.gif. The hover is this little orange arrow, and the li.gif is a little red one. And again, where you'd see those is probably on the links. Let's find a link. So it looks like this is what they have when you hover over them, and this is what they have when they're normal, without a hover. So you're going to learn how to do all of these background images today. Let's go back to the index.html and look at some of these background properties. So I'm going to start a new style rule and just start typing background. And you can see lots of options here. The ones that we are going to talk about, I'm going to erase that, are, and for here, you know that this is an HTML comment. When you're writing HTML, you put comments like in between these two things. That way nobody on the web page, nobody who's looking at the result will see this text. So now I'm going to show you how to do a CSS comment. It is forward slash asterisk. And now I'm going to tell you the kind of background things we're going to look at. We're going to look at color. We're going to look at image. We're going to look at repeat, attachment, and position. Oh, and one more, size. Now I'll end this with just the same thing but backwards. Asterisk, oops, forward slash. So you can see, before I finish typing it, everything becomes a comment. So you've got to finish it off like that. All right, so let's play with background. And as I said, you can see a lot of what we talked about here. But there's also a lot more. We're not going to study it all. But let's talk about the background image first, because we looked at that here, and we know that we want to place that. The way that we are going to place background images in our CSS is by typing URL. And then you can see if I click on the code hint, it'll give me the parenthesis and it'll put my cursor in between them. So I can start my path. It begins with assets. And you can see I should have just let it finish for me. And there's images, and we want blackcomb.jpg. I'll do a save now. There it is, and there's the background image. All right, I have a background image here, and you can see that it's in there and it works, but compared to the finished result, the way it should look, because 
the way it should look, oh my gosh, keeps getting big, huh? The way it should look is that the text, the HTML part of it, wouldn't start until way down here. We're going to fix that in an upcoming video, but first let's talk about some of these background properties. Um, let's look at this closely. I'm going to open my window. Can you see how the image is repeating? By default, the image will repeat right and left, top and bottom. So as big as my window is, that's how much it would repeat. Look at what happens when I make it small. It just keeps repeating. So let's get back to 100 and take care of that repeat. So the rule for telling your background image not to repeat is background repeat. There it is. And we want to choose no repeat. Let's do a save and make sure it happened. Perfect. The image is simply there. By default, this image is going to be at the top left. That's where it lands by default. We can change that, but that's where it will always be de by default. So let's talk about background attachment. We've talked, you've played with color before and image. Now we talked about repeat, and I want to talk about attachment next. So if I say background, there it is, background attachment. So one of the options you can choose is scroll, but scroll is, I'm going to do a save, the default. So that means that the background image scrolls with the text. What if I didn't want scroll? I would choose fixed. Let me do a save and show you what fixed looks like. Now when I scroll, my text is on top of it, and my text moves, but the background image doesn't. When is that a good idea, and when is it a bad idea? Well, here it's a bad idea, because I have some very dark parts of the image over here, and you'll never be able to read the text when it's on top of that dark part. I bookmarked this Zen garden because it's got a fixed background, that works out pretty well. I mean, right here, it's a little hard to read over the CZE. But in general, this background is pale enough, doesn't have any high contrast, for you to be able to read everything that's on top of it. But in this case, it's just a bad idea. So I'm going to take fixed off and talk about a different background with you. Let's talk about background position. So again, as I said, by default, it is top left. That's what this is. So I could write top space left. This part isn't hyphenated. And save it, and nothing changes, because top left is what it is by default. I could also say top right save, and now it is at the top right. Now you might be tempted, when you talk about things, you might be tempted to say left top. You could also do top left by saying 0px, 0px. I'm going to save that, and you'll see that it's still top left. And when it is 0px, the first digit is your x factor. That means right and left. Remember mathematics, you have x and y. x means right to left, and y means top to bottom. So what if I wanted it to stay all the way to the left, but for the y, I wanted it to be down, I don't know, down below this line, that image. So maybe I would call the y 100px. So you can see that will scoot it down. So I think let's change, let's take this out because we're happy with the background position. And in the next video, we'll format the text.